a great racer cruiser and uh, you're gonna have a great little tour of it so follow me the uh, the beautiful blue uh, hull it's uh, nice highly polished the non-skid decks um, <clears throat> that were just redone and uh, really give you a good grip um, and while we're out here I'll just point out also this carbon fiber uh, uh, spinnaker pole it's really lightweight there's actually two of them on the boat so you can really use this boat for um, for racing or long distance cruising up here we have the anchor locker you can see there's no anchor up here on the bow roller or heavy chain in the locker but it's really deep good locker um, if you're going to go cruising there's uh, plenty of room in here for a nice big chain road or uh, rope and actually additional extra storage for you as well the furler on the jib is a uh, harkin a uh, nice oversized harkin furler for this 39 foot boat and the uh, sail on here right now i believe is a 90 90 foot jib which is kind of typical for san francisco bay because blows like stink up here and uh, you know you don't need a lot of sail area up and this boat is really light and good sailing boat so uh, <clears throat> the smaller jib works really well looking back on the deck we've got uh, three four hatches in the middle here um, two open sideways one opens forward one opens back so if you're out cruising the boat you can get good ventilation whichever way the wind is blowing the mast is a the mast is a deck step mast and it's got a stack pack to make it uh, easy sailing uh, the main sail is in really good condition it's more of a racing uh, cruising sail um, and by the way this boat's been raced on the bay a bunch and it's done really well in in the uh, local club races looking at the base of the mast you can see all of the uh, turning blocks um, <clears throat> high quality Harkin turning blocks and the lines run underneath the deck so you got a nice really clean deck for you here so you're not tripping over lines or lines aren't getting in the way also I want to point out the boom bang here with a uh, four to one and a doubler purchase on it so you can get a lot of uh, a lot of down pull on the main with this bang um, pretty easily so they're really clear and they'll stay that way for a long time the the um, the canvas is in really good condition, um, <clears throat> ready to go cruising. Roger, you'll notice the nice hand holds on the side as well as on the back of the Dodger. So getting in and out of the cockpit's really easy um, with good hand holds. Back here, you can just imagine yourself in a race or out cruising with this big uh, destroyer wheel. Um, I don't know the size of it. It's probably, probably. 50 or 60 inches, but um, makes it really easy to steer the boat. Um, be really detailed on your on your uh, steering. You can sit on either side of the helm and see down the side of the boat easily, um, whether you're on the high side or the low side. If you're on the high side, you have these little foot um, rests here that you can use to uh, lean against so you're not um, getting thrown across the cockpit. The rig has a split back stay and it's got an adjuster right here you can adjust this with a uh, winch handle very easily um, easy for the helmsman to uh, control that forward of the helm is the traveler the main traveler um, right here and it's easy to get to um, it's got uh, um, control lines to adjust the traveler up or down when you're racing the boat so again so you have a nice uh, sail trim. Here you've got a couple of uh, lazarettes, um, nice deep lazarettes. You can store fenders down there, or whatever you um, whatever you got. And there's also one on the other side of the uh, cockpit as well. Going forward, you have your secondary winches uh, in easy reach of the helmsman. So if you're short-handing the boat, um, helmsman can get to the main sheet as well as the secondary winch for uh, running a spinnaker or you may be handling the guy on the spinnaker or um, or even the uh, the jib sheet if you're just running a jib in the main 
forward in the cockpit, we have a nice big lazarette here for rope storage and uh, winch handles. You got a bag full of winch handles that come with the boat and lots of extra line and jib sheets and spinnaker sheets and docking lines. Um, <clears throat> and then you have your primary winches on either side so you can have somebody working your um, your jib or, or your, um, your, your sheets on your spinnaker from here and then somebody else working back here. You've got the electric winch to raise the main in the, um, in the halyards. There's a bank of clutches here. On the other side you have a, a winch and that's for your four guy, your reef lines, um, <clears throat> spinnaker halyard and topping lift and jib halyard. And if you want, you can run it, run a line across here to that electric winch. That'll give you a little extra um, ease to raise or lower things. Companionway uh, washboards, they're actually um, enclosed and they just slide up and down and stay right there out of the way. And you can peg them at different heights if you're uh, out in a really stormy sea out there and you're afraid water is going to come over above the, the threshold here, you can actually raise them and peg them. So forward of the companionway is your Raytheon gauges. Um, easy to see wherever you are on the boat. Um, there's also a tactic um, <clears throat> instrument that goes up there that's uh, hiding down below right now. Down here is this beautiful uh, darker uh, mahogany color um, <clears throat> in great condition. And the sole is uh, teak and holly. It is a vinyl teak and holly, so it doesn't get banged up if you happen to drop a winch handle or one of your crewmates drops a winch handle. Um, <clears throat> so uh, it's all in really good condition. We got um, two sinks here. So you got double sinks. Over here is the refrigerator with a little freezer compartment in there as well. You got a three burner propane stove with an oven. You just open it here, just like that. Looks like it may never have been used or very little use. I think these guys were busy out enjoying the boat and not cooking. We've got this um, navigation uh, table and chair, um, which is really nice. You can sit here and kind of wedge yourself in here if you're um, doing any navigating. Um, we've got the circuit breaker control panel over here with the gas control for the propane stove. Uh, we got a little light here and VHF and a radio um, with speakers throughout the boat. 5.8, so it's probably 6.2 to 6.3 for uh, height here. Um, <clears throat> the uh, headliner is a, a really nice kind of Alcantara. All the hatches have these covers as well as screens this is ocean air I believe so this mass is keel step you can see it come down through the uh, deck and it's got this really nice cover on it so it kind of blends in and um, doesn't stick out too much the table that folds up you can fit probably four people around here for uh, for dinner and it is also long enough to sleep on um, table comes up on this side as well, so you can get two people on this side. So easily you can get six people around this table for uh, to sit down for dinner. Outboard storage. There's some some uh, cabinets. Um, <clears throat> this one happens to have some some glassware in here, um, <clears throat> and it's uh, custom made for these glasses. One of the cool things I was uh, just looking through the other day when I was on this boat was the chain plates. You look behind here at the chain plates and they are massive. Um, <clears throat> and they use a uh, ball and socket uh, arrangement here, similar to what Catalina does. Um, so there's not gonna be any leaks or misalignment with the, uh, with the chain plates when you load the rig up. Underneath each settee are uh, fuel and water tanks. So fuel tanks over on this side water tank is over on the uh, port side. Nice spacious V-berth up here, um, nice and long. It's probably six, six or so, so 
Um, <clears throat> you can get some pretty big guys in here if you got uh, got a racing crew or something or doing long distance cruising. Uh, great little um, great little um, cabin. You've got the one hatch here. You got two hatches here, so you got good ventilation. So you don't have to worry about uh, getting too hot up here. In fact, this is probably the best spot on the boat if you're in the tropics because you can get nice ventilation through here. There's good um, storage. Um, there's closets on both sides, hanging closets, as well as uh, shelving. So lots of storage space. Um, underneath this little settee here, which is actually really nice, gives you a place to sit. It's just some extra storage. They got some um, <clears throat> spinnaker gear and sail bags and things. Here in the aft stateroom, it's uh, well, it's probably queen wide, um, <clears throat> nice and long back here. Um, there's good storage in this closet. and um, access to the engine from back here is standing headroom when you first get in here uh, so you got good headroom there's a hatch over on this side that goes out to the cockpit back behind this door is the bathroom uh, or the head uh, it's a <clears throat> jabsco toilet um, and there's actually uh, a stand-up shower in here so stand-up shower, plenty of room in here for a shower. There's um, some storage over here, and you got a real treat here. You got a storage area that is back here that is just huge. You can keep your sails back here, or you know whatever you have if you're going long distance cruising. Um, you can stow lots of gear, lots of uh, food, and things like that back here, um, and it's easy to get to. 2001 Deller 39 that we just listed. It's a great racer cruiser. Hey everybody, uh, we're back and I am um, here with, with Don Sellers and Nick Forlenza. Um, Don was a previous owner, original owner. How long do you own that boat, Don? Oh, probably 17 or 16, 17 of its 18 years. I can't hear. I can't hear. You can't hear me? Yeah, 16 of 17 years. That's a long time. Yeah. So where are some of the places that you've sold with this Deller? Uh, it's mostly in the Bay. Actually, we bought to go to Hawaii, but my, my wife got a couple of issues and we decided to Keep it in the bay, and I converted it from a racer, uh, from a cruiser to a racer cruiser, or cruiser racer. But it has been up uh, as far north as Juan de Fuca in uh, in Washington. It's been you know, up there on the coast in Elliott Bay, uh, and it's been down the coast to you know, the, the, the typical Santa Cruz, Monterey. I haven't really taken it any further south than that. Um, but you cruise her up the coast. It's it's an offshore boat. It is. Uh, yeah, this is a, a Udall Vrolik design. They they designed the Lingi back in the days when they were beating an American, winning the America's Cups. It's it's clearly a it's a it's a Category One uh, offshore certified by Lloyd's to go around the world. It's a tough boat. It's built for the North Sea in Germany. Wow. So, so Don, I think you had mentioned a little about the construction of that boat and that there's some unique features about it you may want to talk, tell us about. Yeah, it's actually, the Daler is it's a German boat, custom, virtually almost custom built back in the day when Willie Daler had it before Hansa bought the company a few years back. But um, yeah, it's a, it's a Monaco hull. It's meaning it's a single piece. There's no glue and screws like, like most boats are put together. It, the, the hull and the deck are glassed. It's a one single fiberglass thing. So everything inside that cabin you were showing everyone, including the engine, came in through the companionway. It's a, it, in that sense, it's a very serious boat. Uh, the keel on it, uh, and I, I, I actually bought that boat after going to Dusseldorf and looking about just about everything that was on the market. So Dusseldorf's a big show, huh? That's the one. Um, that's, 
It's like 17 um, um, hallways filled with huge boats. They've got, uh, yeah, they've got 100 foot sailboats and they were the mast up and some of the big <laughs> airplanes. But uh, the, some of the important things I think about this boat, just to, that are fun, the, uh, the keel is, it's a composite keel actually, it's, it's cast metals, it's cast iron at the top, which, which is where you get a lot of strength compared to lead. Uh, and that's with J, stainless J hooks hooked into the, the bottom of the boat. The, the, the hull, which is, is interlaced with beams, kind of like a, 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 an X yacht. And attached to that cast iron is a lower end of antimony lead with a bulb on it that, that really puts the writing moment. It's down to about 140 degrees of writing moment. The weight's way low on this. So a very stiff boat, particularly in, in, the, in the bay. When other things start rounding up, this thing just locks in and accelerates. It's an interesting boat to sail if you like to sail in big wind. Um, it, and if it's a light wind, it's not a great boat because it really isn't isn't that light. Um, the, the just just some FYIs, the, the jib on it is a 104 standard jib, not a, not that. It just passed the, the mast. Uh, that non-skid on it is really interesting. It's a French material. It's what it's what Hinkley uses when they don't put teak on their decks. They use the same stuff. They put it on typically in a tan. But this, this is gray, and as you noted, it is, it is a brand new replacement. I was trying to make some other notes on it. Uh, the anchor is available. I think Nick has it. It's a 35 pound uh, delta with a lot of chain and a lot of about 300 feet of road. Um, there is no winch in the front. It, it's, it's, there's backing for it for a mounting place. But when I decided to race the boat rather than, than cruise it, I wanted to keep the weight out of the bow. And so that's why the anchor's off the boat. Uh, there is on it uh, to make it legal. There's a, a folding a fold up Danforth with enough road to, to legitimize and actually to hold the boat, but a much lightweight, much lighter weight folding <coughs> Danforth. So if you're going to go cruising, you'd want to put that anchor on in, the, in that chain and road. Right. And unless you have a, a, a good, strong teenage son or a beefy <laughs> wife, well, <laughs> you might want to <laughs> have pulled in that, that anchor by hand and it works but you might want to get the windlass on there. It yeah, actually, for around the, around the bay, you don't really use anchor much right. anyway, so. Right, but for the, uh, and just for that FYI, there's the batteries on the two 8Ds, they're, they're huge, uh, you know, batteries. Uh, put those on for the electric halyard winch, but they're also more than adequate to run the, uh, an anchor winch, winch. so that's, that's all ready for that. Um, the wheel you were looking at, that's a 60 inch destroyer wheel with an outside. 60 inch. Yeah. And it's on a rack and pinion steering system, no cables. No cables. So tell us about rack and pinion. Well, it, it's a system that Lumar makes, uh, called, was called the Cobra. And it's, 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 a, it's graduated from center to side to side, 1.7 locks, uh, 1.7 turns lock to lock. And it really turns like a sports car. It, it just is about a six foot spade rudder there. And it really just turns the boat. Very responsive uh, and very light touch. It, and I suspect with that big rudder, you can back that boat up pretty, pretty good too. Well, it's, yeah, it's a sail drive. So it doesn't have any, any it doesn't tend to lean left or right when you're going in reverse. And it, it yeah, it's, it's, you, can, you can park it quite easily for the size of the boat. Although, What's the prop on the boat? It's a it's a, a dual flex a flexifold, fold I think a dual flexifold. folding prop uh, that was put on you know again just to get out of the way when the boat was going uh, in a, in a race but the uh, yeah it, it works very well about seven eight knots you know at a at a pretty reasonable RPM no problem at all and it'll do about with the the diesel on it it'll do about three hundred to almost four hundred miles. Uh, you know, if you, if you got if you got to run it on the diesel, which what coming size of the fuel tank? Um, honestly, can't remember. Um, We've they, got it in our specs, so <laughs> we should have it. <laughs> if you're coming up from, from Santa Cruz or Monterey, and you, you don't want to keep beating against the wind and getting out too far, it, it'll easily make that run, no problem at all. All right. So I understand you have two carbon fiber spinnaker poles, right? Well, yeah, actually there's the, they're on the boat. 
there's a couple of sales that are special for the for the racing. There's a 140 Genoa uh, for when you've got 10 guys on it and, and really can put a racing crew together. Um, you need the rail meet when you do that. But it's got a uh, an asymmetrical spinnaker, and one of those carbon fiber poles is a is a is a bowsprit type for an asymmetrical. Oh. Uh, that, that's a Doyle uh, sail, and the other is a, a, a regular full-blooded uh, high-shouldered North uh, racing spinnaker, and that's the uh, the GMT pole, um, GMT composites from out of Rhode Island, and there's there's tweaker lines in that. Uh, it, yeah, it's it's. It's done very well. We've been on the podium at the Big Boat Series a number of times. So uh, the boat, if you don't make the mistakes, the boat will, will, will perform for you. But it, uh, having said all that, um, I've single-handed it myself a lot. Uh, and with two people, I've run the asymmetrical, never the full spinnaker, but I can run the asymmetrical in, in place of a jib. Uh, you, know, you go out to the Golden Gate and swing home towards the South Beach Marina and just pop the asymmetrical and just run right in, really kind of neat. So yeah, it, it's, but those are the two poles and then and the rigging, there's rigging, separate rigging for both of them. Um, I did want to say on, on the main sheeting, the, there's a, there is a traveler on the boat and we extended that side to side to have a little more control and it's end boom sheeting. Uh, meaning that again, you might much better sail control when you have that rig at the end of the boom, as you know, instead of mid, you know, on mid boom. Uh, a little bit less comfortable for, for people trying to walk back and forth, but it's a much better way to sail. The, uh, and there's two complete main sheet rigs on it. One is a uh, Fredrickson out of Denmark with an eight to one ratio, makes it very easy to, to sail it by yourself or with one person. And the other is a, uh, a two end main sheet spinnaker for racing where you're using the winches and really close hauling the boat. So it goes either way. It can be your best friend or it can be a very competitive animal. Uh, the best thing about the boat is it's, it's, uh, it doesn't care what's going on out there in the bay. That, that boat has had its rudder out of the water. Uh, oh, geez. Years, very early years, I put a German on the wheel once and uh, he turned the wrong <laughs> way coming in uh, on, on a big boat race. And uh, we, we not only took it over once, but twice. Oh, I can't have a picture of it, but it, the boat didn't really care. The, the, it's a triple spreader rig with, with die form, and people who know boats will know that that's not rod rigging. It's actually a little better, I think. It's got a little bit of give in it, but it's way stronger than the, the 119 you usually see on a regular regular boat. And of course, the, the hull, the, 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 de the mass stepped on the, on the hull, on the keel, makes it very, very strong and stiff boat. Um, there was one other thing I pointed out. The, the Villaroy and Bosch China and Crystal on the boat came with it uh, as oh, a gift to the company. It's, it's from Germany. And that was a kind of a gift from the company for buying the boat. Uh, and that's, that's what all that's about. The headroom in it is six foot five. Um, the standard five clutches on each side have been amplified with a, 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 a super rut rope clutch for the main halyard and the jib halyard. So they're very strong, and, and those those are all high end lines, crystalline, warp speed. Um, you know, really, we're not talking about uh, New England rope here. <laughs> I don't know what else to say. Except if any of our, are there any questions, I'd be glad to answer them uh, later on. Yeah, N Nick, you are the current owner. Tell us a little about how you ended up with this great boat. Uh, well, Don is my uh, father-in-law. This was a family thing. And All right. part of, part, I just retired from my job. And one of the, the, the logic was, given some other circumstances, that uh, one of my retirement things was going to be learning to sail. But it's, uh, um, you know, I, I've decided I have got enough things to do that that's not going to be the direction I go. So it's time to sell the boat. In this boat, we're asking 120 for it. It's a steal at 120. And we have a boat show special at 110. So somebody that wants a really good sailing boat, they can go cruise the boat, they can race it. Um, this is definitely a boat to look at. I, I mean, I, I'd be on this boat in a minute. Plus the 39 foot boat fit in a 40 foot slip? Yes. Yes. Especially so, without the anchor. Without the anchor. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, if you keep uh, the anger. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but by the way, we did mention that Don said if you've got a hefty white, I, ca I carried the anchor up from the box all the way out to the car. It was a haul. <laughs> So the new owner is going to have to go to your house to pick up the anchor. Oh, uh, we'll take care of it. Let's figure. We'll it out. take care of it. Find the right. Find the obviously looking for a good home for it. It's it's a special boat, and I know that. <laughs> it is yeah, a this, very special boat. I mean, this is a great boat. Um, I know a lot of people that are sitting at home now thinking about, you know, maybe going cruising because you know they they've been working hard their whole lives, and with all this uh, COVID going on and shelter in place it's uh kind of enticing to get out and uh, go cruising hop on a nice boat especially one that's this strong and can take you up or down the coast or even take you over to the south pacific caribbean wherever you want to go so this is a great boat to do that in or buy the boat hang out in the bay and go race you know you be competitive and again just a great boat it's all set up for set for uh racing and uh there you go so Don and, and uh, Nick, you got anything else, any parting words? Not, not from me, Don, anything from you? I think uh, Don could talk for hours about this yeah. boat. <laughs> I, well, all I can tell you is I have sailed on it and it, it yeah. is magnificent. Yeah, I, I, I have been over every inch of the boat. Uh, you know, had the, the, the floorboards up, the, that holly sole came up. Um, I mean, just checking everything out and looking at it and seeing the way it's done. It's amazing construction. Um, it's, 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 a, it's a very, very robust boat. Um, and there's, you know, I honestly never came across anything that wasn't quite right with it. Even, even the, the lights in the main salon, they got dimmers on them. Uh, the, the only thing that's missing from that boat, honestly, is some, uh, you know, navigation gear, only because I decided I didn't really need to sail much more outside the, uh, the bay, you can go 50 miles in either direction. Um, it's won the Great Eagle Race. <laughs> the, the, uh, yeah, but uh, it, it's, yeah, no, it's a really, really good, comfortable, safe, secure boat. Yeah, That's and that. if you buy this boat, uh, <clears throat> you can uh, get electronics put on there. My last trip was South Africa to Florida. I've, I've talked about that a few times. And we did that trip by iPad. The entire way. Now, if yeah. you're racing, you probably want a little more sophisticated wind instruments and things like that. But um, cruising, you don't need that much. And for five thousand dollars, you can put a nice set of new electronics on that boat and head out the gate. And yeah. I don't know, turn left, turn and, right. And, and, yeah, That's where say, you want to go. I'd rather buy five one thousand handheld GPSs because I know I'll have them. I'll always have one. I put 5,000 in one, one GPS in the nav station. It looks cool, but when it's gone, unless you know how to work a sextant, you're yeah. totally. On our uh, South Africa trip, there was four of us, and we had, I don't know, 10 devices with Navionics on it. So we were all set. Um, anyways, thanks so much, Don. Thanks so much, Nick. Um, you're, you're a wealth of information. Anybody that's interested in this boat, you want to talk to Don or Nick, get more info on it, just let us know. Um, we'll put you in touch. Don loves to talk about his boat. So, uh, and Nick as well. So <laughs> thanks everybody for joining us. And uh, next up, I am going to give away a prize. And that prize is going to be um, red and white uh, bottles of wine from Mount Beautiful Winery. And Gailey, you want to pick a winner for that? And the winner is Dave Talton. Dave Talton. All right. Dave's over in Emeryville, I think. Yeah, Dave, we can deliver that to you. <laughs> Congratulations. All right. Next. Next up is going to be this the uh, Sydney 38. And that's a 2002. And that is a really cool race boat. Um, we're going to show you a little video on that, and then we're going to come back and we're going to join up with uh, Jeff Pulford, the owner of the boat and the winner of many races. <laughs>